Amen. I've told people for years, when it rains, don't miss church because God comes when it rains. Amen? Don't ever miss church. Don't ever miss church when it rains. Psalm 121. I will lift up my eyes to the mountains. From where shall my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to slip. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun will not smite you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will protect you from all evil. He will keep your soul. The Lord will guard your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. First of all, the psalmist said, the Lord is my sovereign helper. He is almighty God. He is above all, over all. You can't impeach him and he's not going to resign. Psalmist said, I will lift up my eyes to the mountains, the mountains around Jerusalem. From where shall my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He asks a question and he answers the question because he knew the answer before he asked it. Just like Jesus, he was just making a point. Question, I've lifted up my eyes to the mountains. From where shall my help come from? The Old Testament Jews, many of them trusted in those mountains. They said this is a natural barricade from our enemies and indeed it was a mighty fortress, but they needed more than those mountains. They needed more than just physical protection. They needed something else, and the psalmist knew it. He said, oh, my help, my help comes from the Lord, verse 2, who made the heavens and the earth. He was not trusting in the mountains. He was trusting in the one who made the mountains, to trust the Lord who made heaven and earth, creator of the universe. Our sun, have you ever looked at our sun? Our sun is a star. Did you know that? Now, they say you're not supposed to look at it, but we always look at it. Isn't that what we do? We do what we're told not to. Isn't that what we do? I remember when there was a solar eclipse recently, I was literally on a car rental bus and could not see out in Dallas, Texas. But the sun is really a star that our planet Earth revolves around. It's just a medium-sized star, and yet it is 864,000 miles in diameter. It is made of 2 billion, billion, billion tons of gas. Over every square inch of the sun's core, there is pressing down a million, million, million pounds of matter. The energy that keeps our sun from collapsing is astonishing. That energy is so strong at the sun's core that the core reaches a temperature of 25 million degrees Fahrenheit. Every second, every second, 657 million tons of hydrogen are burned by the sun, consumed by the sun. And yet, Our sun is large enough and dense enough to burn for another 50 billion years. We're talking about just one medium-sized star. And our God made that star and all the stars. And our God who made the universe is big enough to help you with whatever problem you've got. He is the sovereign God. Mountains of rock cannot help you, but Jesus can. 
Mountains of money cannot help you, but Jesus can. Mountains of materialism cannot help you, but Jesus can. Mountains of intelligence cannot help you, but Jesus can. The psalmist was always referring to God as his helper. Psalm 27 verse 9, don't hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my help. Do not abandon me nor forsake me, O God of my salvation. Psalm 33 verse 20, our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. Psalm 40 verse 17, since I'm afflicted and needy, let the Lord be mindful of me. You are my help and my deliverer. Don't delay, O my God. Psalm 46 verse 1, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Psalm 54 verse 4, behold, God is my helper. The Lord is the sustainer of my soul. Psalm 94 verse 17, if the Lord had not been my help, my soul would soon have dwelt in the abode of silence. Psalm 115 verse 9, O Israel, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. Psalm 124 verse 8, our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Has the doctor given you little hope? I remind you this morning that your help comes from the Lord. Have your resources just about dried up? Your source hasn't dried up. Your help comes from the Lord. Have you sunk into discouragement, depression, despair? Your help comes from the Lord. Are you having problems with your family? Your help comes from the Lord. Are you at the end of your rope? Your help comes from the Lord. A mighty fortress is our God, a bulwark never failing. Our helper, He, amid the flood of mortal ills prevailing. I love Isaiah. My son is, I asked him today, I call him every Sunday morning. What are you preaching on? I'm preaching my last sermon. He's been preaching two years out of the book of Isaiah. Last sermon. I said, what's the name of it? He said, the end. (laughs) He's preaching on the judgment today. He said, it's a fitting title. And Isaiah 41.10 says, do not fear. I am with you. Do not anxiously look about you. I am your God. I will strengthen you. Surely I will what? Say it out loud. Help you. Surely I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Don't lose hope, child of God. God is still sovereign. There's a powerful God out there that wants to help you. I will lift up my eyes to the mountains from where shall my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Oh, the Lord is our sovereign helper. He is also our stabilizing helper. How many of you like stability? Anybody like stability in your life? I tell you, the older you get, sometimes you don't feel as stable as you used to. I don't act all holy on me like you don't know what I'm talking about. Sometimes you totter a little bit. But the Bible says in verse 3, he will not allow your foot to slip. The psalmist recognized that life can be a slippery slope. Another translation translates verse 3, He will never let me slip or fall. He won't let my foot totter. Life can be a slippery slope. But verse 3 says the Lord stabilizes our lives gives us solid ground upon which to walk. The Lord is my stabilizing helper. When we were younger, we took our children to the circus back before somebody outlawed it because it's so cruel to animals. I love the circus. Don't act, did you not like the circus? Well, forget it. They're gone. My kids like the cotton candy. I like the tightrope walkers. And they'd get up there, 
And they, they never would just walk across it. Nobody clapped for that. They thought anybody could do that, although I couldn't do it. But they would have people on their shoulders, and they'd put them up there. They'd be balancing. They'd be riding bicycles. They'd be juggling on top of their shoulders. But the people on the wire all had one thing in common. They were holding a balancing bar because they knew that they had to stay balanced. They had to stay balanced. It didn't matter what was happening above them, but it did matter what was happening below them. And they had to be balanced. How many of you know that the only one that balances our lives is the Lord Jesus Christ? Amen? We get out of balance just real quick. We can get so mad. We can get so upset. We can get so worked up. But I want to say this to you. He will not allow your foot to slip. Some of you feel like I'm on some slippery slopes right now, Brother Steve. I don't know if I'm going to make it. I feel like I'm about to fall. God is your stabilizing help. Jesus will not let you fall. Jesus, just like a father teaches his little toddler how to walk, Jesus Christ is stabilizing you right now. Colossians 1.17 says, in him all things. Everybody say all things. All things hold together. He is the stabilizing force in this universe. Why is it that planets don't come off of their orbits? Why is it that all these solar systems are wrapping around the universe and they don't run into one another? Because Jesus Christ in Him, all things in this universe hold together. He is stabilizing it. And I'm telling you, if God can take care of the whole universe and stabilize everything out there, he can stabilize your life. Our God is a stabilizing God, and He's our stabilizing helper. Number three, oh, I love this one. He is my sleepless helper. Look at the rest of verse 3 and all of verse 4. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. Do not fear, the psalmist says. The one who guards us never slips away into slumber. He never sleeps. He doesn't even take a quick nap. He is not a sentinel who snores. He is a protective God. He is always available. His eye is always on His children. He is a sleepless helper. How is it? that when soldiers go out to war, they can sleep at night. I mean, you've got all kinds of enemies around you all the time. They can sleep because one of them stays awake to watch over the rest of them. How is it that on a morning like we had this morning, how is it that, that uh, uh, all the thunder and lightning, oh, I love it. I got up early today. I, I like that stuff. I like to be inside. But how can a little baby, how can a little child sleep through that? Because they know their parents are holding them close. How are you going to make it through life? How are you going to make it through the storms of life? How are you going to make it through the battles of life? I'll tell you how you're going to make it. You've got a God who does not sleep. His eyes never grow weary. I love that song. His eye is on the sparrow and I know he what? Watches me. Psalm 32 verse 8. I pray it every day for multiple people. But I love the promise for myself. I will, God says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way that you should go. I will guide you with my eye upon you. He never takes his eye off of you. You are the apple of God's eye, and his eye never shuts. You know why you can sleep? Because God never does. You can sleep because God never does. You can rest because God never does. He made us to have to sleep. We have to go to sleep. You cannot go a full week without some time along the way going to sleep. You know why? Because God is the only one who doesn't sleep. And in, even in that, He's showing how much bigger and greater He is than us and how much we need Him. I need sleep, but God doesn't. Praise His name. Blessed thought. He never slumbers. He's our sleepless helper. 
He, you can talk to him at one in the morning. He's wide awake. You can talk to him anytime. He's a very present help. And then fourthly, the Lord is my shielding helper. And by the way, don't y'all tell anybody I can preach this fast because I don't want to have to do it all my life, all right? Look at verse 5. The Lord is your keeper. The word means guard. It means watchman. It means bodyguard. The Lord is watching over you. Puritan preacher Matthew Henry remarked on this text by saying, whether every particular saint has an angel for his guardian or not, we are sure he has God himself for his guardian. Verse 5 goes on to say, The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun will not smite you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord would protect his people like shade protected someone from the destructive, damaging rays of the sun. I can remember my grandmothers. Both of them had gardens. And they didn't do it just because it was cool. They did it because they ate the food that came out of it. And they would go out in their garden and it would be 95 degrees and they would have long sleeve shirts on, long dresses and bonnets over their head and you would have thought they were dressed for midwinter. And I said, what are you doing? They said, well, two things. Number one, when we dress like this, we sweat and when the wind comes by, it's an automatic air conditioner. Everybody says country people didn't know what they were doing. Yes, they did. And number two, the sun's not good for your skin. They didn't know it back then, but it causes cancer. And so God is saying, I will be your shade. I will protect you just like something like that protects someone from the sun. The Lord will protect you from all evil. Derek Kidner in his commentary on the Psalms points out, that this was not a cushioned life, but rather a well-armed life. Some people, some people are going to attack God's people, but even in the midst of that, they cannot harm us, they cannot do anything to us unless the Lord allows it. The Lord promised to protect and defend us even under attack. Verse 8 says, the Lord will guard your going out and your coming in. Perhaps you're familiar with the mezuzah. The Jews, when they would go out, they would have the law written on their wall there. And today they have a mezuzah. It's symbolic of the Torah. And they would touch it on the way out. And it meant while I'm going out, the Lord God and His Word are going to be over my life. And when I come in, I'm going to touch the law. I'm going to touch the mezuzah. And that means I want God in my house and out of my house. I want God with me when I go. And by the way, we might all all, all ought to put mezuzahs on on our door to remember that when we walk out, we are still a child of God. And when we come home, let's remember that we're still a child of God. Let's touch the Word of God, that the Word of God might be on our mouth before our wives and our children and all of our descendants. Everywhere I go, whether I'm going out or coming in, God is with me, and I'm supposed to live for Jesus everywhere I go. That's the the background of this. And they would quote, the Jews would quote, This verse, Psalm 121, verse 8, the Lord will guard my going out and my coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Verse 8, from this time forth and forevermore, the psalmist believed that the Lord would be protecting him and shielding him, his bodyguard, not just in this life, but in the life to come. Last year, this past year, to be frank with you, I can't even remember when it was, but I know I preached in Galveston, Texas. And there is a wall there, and it was built years ago by a man named George Bosch. George Bosch was hired by that city to build a wall. It's right on the Gulf of Mexico and to protect Galveston from the waters that might come from any hurricane. He built a wall with complete confidence that it would withstand any storm of nature After he built it, he was so confident, he left Texas and went to Oregon to build railroads. And One day he got a telegram saying that Galveston had been hit by a storm and the city was flooding. 
He said, that's a lie. I built that wall to stand. And he confidently went back to work. And guess what? They found out it was a lie. The storm had hit, but Galveston was saved by his wall. It was built to stand. And I got news for you. Whatever storm hits your life, if you know Jesus, Jesus builds a wall to stand. You don't have to worry about that wall. He'll guard you going out. He'll guard you coming in. When you leave your house, Jesus will be with you. When you pull out of the driveway, he's buckling up in the seat, and he'll stay in there if you'll drive the speed limit. Amen. When you board a plane, Jesus is sitting in the cockpit. When you are at work, Jesus is watching over you. When you come back home, Jesus walks right in with you and checks everything out before you come in. When you go to sleep, Jesus never does. He's guarding over you. Jesus will keep on shielding you from this time forth and forevermore. And though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you don't have to fear any evil. God is with you. His rod and His staff, they comfort you. Your shield, He is your shield and your exceeding great reward. He's your keeper. He's your shade. He's your protection. He's your guard. He is your shield. And if you will walk obedient with the Lord, even the devil himself cannot take you out of this life until it is your time to go home. Amen. Amen. Nobody can harm you until it's your time to go home if you'll walk obediently with the Lord. Oh, God. God is your help. He's your shielding helper. And one more thing, the Lord is your saving helper. Look at verse 7. The last part says, He will keep my soul. Say that with me. He will keep your soul. Now we come to the heart of it all, do we not? The soul. What is the soul of someone? It's their inner being. It's your innermost man. It's who you really are. You are not a body with a soul. The Bible says God created Adam and Eve a living soul. And then he gave them a body. God, your soul is more important than your body. You are body, soul, and spirit. But not with God. With God, you are spirit, soul, and body. How many of you know that the body wears out? Anybody know that? How many anybody live long enough know that? But the soul can get better all the time. It's not just my body that needs the Lord shielding, it's my soul that needs the Lord shielding because Jesus said in Matthew 16, 26, for what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits and loses his soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? I know people that are throwing their lives away for a little sexual immorality right now. They're giving up their eternal soul. Or to do some shady business right now, they're giving up their eternal soul. Or they're giving up their marriage and they're giving away their soul. I want to say this to you. Whatever sin the devil is tempting you with, it is not worth your soul. Your soul is by far more important than your body. Your soul is more important than any material thing. Your soul is more important if you had all the riches in the world and then you had your soul on the other side. Take your soul every time and keep your soul close to Jesus. Let Him be the Savior and the protector and the shield of your soul. My saving helper. Only God can see a soul and only God can save a soul. Are you saved? Do you know the Lord? Has Jesus ever awakened your soul to life in Him? Has your soul ever cried out, Jesus, 
have mercy on me. Have you ever cried out from your soul? Have you ever said, Lord, I am a wretched sinner. I am a selfish individual. I want what I want when I want it, the way I want it, as much as I want it. I am wrapped up in me. My soul is burdened. My soul is blotted with all kinds of stain. I, my soul is not clean. Oh, Jesus, you have come and you have lived a sinless life that I could not live. You were born of a virgin. You don't have a sinful nature like I was born in sin like David said in Psalm 51. I am prone to selfishness. I want to do it my way, but you didn't do it your way. You did it God's way. You constantly gave up your will for God's will. I don't live like that. And Lord Jesus, you went to the cross, and I should have died on that cross. I'm the one with the filthy soul. You had the perfect soul, and yet you put your perfect soul on the cross. You held out your arms, and you were nailed for me, and you were spat upon for me, and you were slapped for me, and you were ridiculed for me, and nevertheless, you kept right on because you wanted to save my soul. And they finally, finally when you cried out and you gave up your spirit, they ran a spear into your side and you did that for my soul. And they took you off of that cross and they put you in that borrowed tomb and you laid there for three days dead so you could save my soul. But then on that glorious Easter morning, you came out of the grave to save my soul. You appeared to the disciples for 40 days to save my soul. You went back to heaven. You are the exalted one at the right hand of the Father. You're there until all of your enemies are made a footstool for your feet so you can save my soul. You're preparing a place in me in heaven so that I can be with you forever because you want to save my soul. You're getting ready to come back on a white stallion because you want to come for me because you want to save my soul. Jesus, I give you my soul. I give you my spirit. I give you my body. I give you my life. Oh, Lord Jesus, you are the only one that can help me and save me today. Have you ever called out to God like that? Have you ever called out to God like that? You ever, you ever called out to God so desperate that you, you just couldn't breathe unless you had the Lord? That's what you got to have if you want God to be your saving helper. I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence cometh my help? My help cometh from the Lord. My help cometh from the Lord. Not from the Democrats, not from the Republicans. My help cometh from the Lord. Not from the government. My help cometh from the Lord. Not even from my family. My help cometh from the Lord. Would you let Jesus save you today? Would you let him help you? Would you let him take your soul? Would, would, you, would you lay your soul on the altar and say, Lord Jesus, help me. Save me. Heavenly Father, I pray and thank you for being our helper. Let someone be saved today, we pray in Jesus' name. And all God's people said,